Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the arcade classic known as Galaga. This is kind of a follow-up to Space Invaders. I don't think it was made by the same company, but as you can see here, it's pretty much like Space Invaders, except the Space Invaders are not going to play nice and just slowly inch their way towards you. They are going to dive bomb and shoot aggressively at you, which is pretty cool. We're, we're sort of getting to see the evolution of video games. I mean, as we go through my series, sort of. Um, I'm not doing games in a particular order, so I guess we're not really seeing the evolution, but like, if you think to, to key episodes, like I played Space Invaders, oh god, way back, like episode 20 or something like that. Oh, it was so long ago, actually, like in retrospect. I was so young and naive back then, guys. Oh, look, your ship can get abducted and it turns evil. That's actually kind of a, a, a cool uh, feature of this game. So they can take your ship and then it becomes like an evil ship and will shoot at you up there. See it up there fighting against you now? That's actually a pretty neat uh, idea and feature. I don't know if you can... Oh, you can save your ship and bring it back. Huh, that's cool. Interesting, I didn't know that. See, we're learning stuff as we watch the opening montage here, guys. But if you think back to Space Invaders, when I played it way back when in episode 20, um, it was pretty much like this, except not quite as um, sophisticated. And so Galaga is one step um, above this. We're going to go ahead and insert a coin here and start the game off. First bonus at... Oh, so this is when we get extra lives, I guess. So first at 20,000 points, then every 70,000 points. We can do this. We can do this. This isn't so hard, guys. Um, Galaga here was one of the most successful, um, video games of the golden era. Man, I'm rocking it. I'm just destroying these guys. Of the golden era of video games. It, uh, it, it, it's actually a sequel. This is actually a sequel to a game called Galaxian. And I've, I've never heard of Galaxian before, by the way. Er, well, not that I've never heard of it, actually. I have heard of it. But, like, I, I, I don't know the difference between Galaga and Galaxian. Oh, God, the butterfly got me. Damn it. Well, level one starting off a little rough. Man, it's a little harder than it looks. Um, when there's a whole bunch of enemies on the screen, it's really hard to hit something. When there's only like one or two guys and you have to be precise, it's actually really hard. It's just like in Space Invaders, like when you get down to that last Space Invader, he actually gets very tricky. Oh my God, die you be! There we go, we got it, we passed the level. Oh God, but we're not doing good in terms of lives and points. Um, fun little fact about this game, it was featured in the movie War Games in two scenes. So not really featured all that much. It appeared in War Games, we should say that. Uh, but Matthew Broderick was sent an arcade uh, cabinet for Galaga so he could practice for his role in the movie because he played like a nerdy little hacker. And in the movie, he was the one playing Galaga. So they sent him an arcade cabinet of this game. And for the two brief appearances of this game in, in the movie War Games, Matthew Broderick practiced for two months. This means that either Matthew Broderick is horrible at video games. You know, like, who has to practice more than, like, five or ten minutes, like, get the hang of this. So either he is horrible at video games, or he he was just having a, a really fun time with Galaga. I like to think it's the latter, but, you know, he is from a different generation. Like, he didn't grow up with video games. They kind of appeared when he was, like, in his late teens to 20s. So, like, kids these days, you could hand them... Well, actually, I don't know about kids these days. Um, at one point, you could hand kids a video game, and they would just, like, ace it. Um, I think video games have sort of changed fundamentally these days that they're not as hard and difficult. And so kids these days almost maybe could would have a lot of difficulty with these old retro games because they're very unforgiving. But there was a time, like, my generation and people around my generation when, like, you just grew up with games being, like, brutally difficult. And so when people would just hand you uh, a random game of an older era, even if it was hard, it's like, yeah, well, we're used to it. And, uh, and we would just figure it out. So, oh God, bees! Not, not to, not to like, geez, not, not to sound like superior or anything to people who uh, didn't happen to be born when I was born, but uh, that's just my perception of things. I don't know. I could be off. I could be off. Maybe. Oh, what are these things? They're like space uh, scorpions. Ah, oh, I walked right into that bullet. Oh, we're only two thousand points away from an extra life. Oh my God! Shots fired, four hundred twenty-six. Number of hits, one fifty-eight. So, oh, it's interesting. They give you the hit miss ratio. I like to think that these are the same enemies from Space Invaders, and they just wised up a little. They were like, hey, why don't we fly at him? And then the other ships were like, fly at the bad guy? 
Because I guess from their perspective, you would be the bad guy. But, uh, yeah, then it kind of caught on, and before you know it, everyone's doing it, and they realize, you know what, when we fly at him shooting aggressively, we have a better chance of actually killing this guy. Oh, that bee went right underneath me. Thought I was dead. Man, these bullets kind of home in on you a little bit. Let's kill this bee. Nope, we, we missed everyone over there. Butterfly! Bee! <laughs> oh, God, there's only one left. I'm scared to try and attack him. Ha! Hey oh Hey-ho! Oh, God. This is like a this is like a really intense dogfight, a space dogfight between a ship and a butterfly, a spaceship and a butterfly. Ah, oh, damn! You know one thing I'm noticing here, or I'm finding, is the screen is so big. Like I'm often looking at the top of the screen to see where I want to shoot, but meanwhile the guys swoop down towards the bottom of the screen, and I'm not. My eyes aren't looking at the bullets at the bottom of the screen, and that's when I'm getting hit. That's how they're hitting me. So I really need to, as soon as they start diving at me, forget about where I'm shooting up above and focus on uh, down near my ship to keep my ship alive. Oh, we just flew through that level. Matthew Broderick will be proud, baby. Oh, we're at a bonus level now. So I guess in the bonus level, they don't really shoot at you and you just have to kill as many of them as you can. This is where you rack up those extra life points. Um, another bit of trivia for this game, um, it was also, there was a submarine in Lost called the Galaga, and the writers did that because they had a Galaga machine, I guess, in the writing room, and they would play it during the, uh, like, slow periods. Galaga here also made an appearance in the first Avengers movie when, uh, they go to the heli- heli- helicopter? No, not a helicopter. Helipad? Helicarrier, that's what it was. The helicarrier for the first time, and Tony Stark is like, that man is playing Galaga! And he totally was. That scene always, it was so so random. Um, they, it, it always just kind of felt like it, it was weird that it was in there. It was funny. It was funny. The Avengers movies are, are like, they're, well, they're great action and they're also great fun. So it, it was sort of like humorous, but it kind of didn't make sense. Why was Nature playing Galaga randomly? Like, what was the significance of that? I, I don't know. Maybe it was a Hydra agent, as we would learn in Captain America uh, Civil War. Oh, I got captured. Oh no, fighter captured. That that was an accident. Although I have been curious to see what happens when this when this occurs. I want to get my ship back. We are Yes. Oh, oh, B B No! Oh, butterfly. Okay, here we go. Wait till we have the kill shot. Man, I can't believe that like butterflies or butterflies and bees are giving you the most trouble. Come on. Yeah, there we go. That was a sniper shot there. You know what's funny is like the gameplay in this is obviously, damn it, very simple. Uh, but it does hold up, like in a weird way. Like, um, it, it, it's very, very simple controls, left, right, and shoot. But like the, the core mechanics, I feel like, of shooters um, have, haven't really like changed that much over, o over the years or what am I trying to say here? Basically, like, back when I was playing Space Invaders, one thing that I found really fascinating about Space Invaders is that although Space Invaders is, like, incredibly simple by today's standards, it still has, like, a lot of core shooting mechanics, like having to dodge into cover and, like, do, like, a precision shot on an enemy and stuff. And when I am able to, like, snipe an enemy, ugh, I get that same rush, like, when I'm playing a modern first-person shooter and I snipe him. Like, there, that felt good. That, like, ace shot that I did right there. Um, and so, in a weird way, games like this, I think, hold up pretty well. I mean, hell, the writers for Lost were playing it all the way into, like, 2007 or, what was it, 2009, I think, potentially. Um, and then it was shown in Avengers in 2013. Like, it's, it's still a fun game. It's very simple. Um, obviously, oh, damn it. The bullets really do home in on you, by the way. Like, that bullet was, was homing on me. 48%! We're going up, guys. We're going up. But yeah, like, the gameplay behind this game is obviously holding up to some degree. Ooh. We can enter our name. Okay, we gotta do this before the time runs out. They always put time limits on these things. Yeah. Boom! Jay got... Oh, number one. Yes, of course. Let's keep going, though. We, we got a few more in us. Um, but yeah, obviously, like, people are still playing this game, and, like, I could see this being a game on phones and stuff. The only thing that, that makes it, like, not a modern, like, if this was a modern game, a modern remake of this, would just have more levels, more complexity, like, there'd be a little more going on than just the same stage over and over again, but getting faster. 
but you know, again, the the core like they that just means they're going to dress the gameplay up a little bit more. But the gameplay isn't going to change sort of dramatically or fundamentally. Like it's still going to be a shooter where you have to dodge left and right and shoot at enemies that kind of dive at you. And like that's the core. That's that's been the core of all shooters since like the dawn of gaming time. Since the golden era of gaming, guys, the golden era. I always liked that they called like the really early era of gaming the golden era. So the golden era was when there was like arcades and people owned Atari 2600s and there were like ColecoVisions and that kind of stuff. Like really, really old, old school uh, era of gaming. I guess, I don't know what come, came after that. Like the silver era? I don't even think they do that. Uh, like they don't call it that. Like in comics it goes golden age and silver age and so on. But I think in, in video games it's just like there's the golden era and that's like arcades and stuff. And then after that, um, it's like the NES era or something. Let's kill these guys. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, we're, we're doing, we're doing better. We're improving. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Ugh, come here, come here. Oh, these guys are so good at dodging. Ha! Not perfect, though. Um, yeah, what comes after Golden Age? I think it's the NES age. And then like the, the, oh no, I guess it would be the 8-bit era, then the 16-bit era. Then after 16-bit, then it kind of starts to leave what I would consider the retro era, personally. Like it starts to get into three, like the PlayStation and the N64. So I guess it would go to like the Polygon era. But like, I mean, that's fine. I mean, a lot of people still do consider that retro and maybe even the generation after that. So like the PS2 and uh, I guess Xbox era, people would consider that retro. It's, it's starting to leave the retro era for me personally. Um, and it's not just a, a matter of, well, these are the games I grew up with and damn it, anything I didn't grow up with, I'm not gonna call retro. I think when you switch to 3D games, there's a fundamental shift in the style of games that get played. Like in, in, the, in the Super Nintendo era, like game, there were a lot of platformers. You know, everything was two-dimensional, so it's like the games played a certain way. When you get to, like, the Polygon 3D era, it's like games really sort of shifted, and then you needed dual analog sticks. Like, you never needed dual analog sticks uh, for Super Nintendo games. Even when you played something like Doom, it was still, it wasn't really played with a mouse. That was a game you could play with the keyboard. But once you got into true, like, Quake and stuff, then you really needed a mouse um, or dual analog sticks if you're playing Halo. And so once you kind of get to that era, I think there's a fundamental shift in the style of games. Um, and I think that the shift is still going on. Like, modern games um, tend to include a lot of RPG and always online capabilities and, like, cloud-saving characters and stuff like that. That's something that we didn't have back in the PS2 and Xbox era. So it's like the, there still are sort of, you know, generational shifts in the style of styles that are used to make video games like it like if you even if you ignore like the seventh generation of console and the eighth generation of console and the, the sixth generation of console like that that demarcation of eras there's still sort of notable gameplay changes um that are occurring like everything now every game now has unlockable content you have to grind away in games and you have to get points and we're just gonna be blah, with a period <laughs> You have to grind away and get points to unlock skins for your characters and weapons in multiplayer and this and that. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of the like achievement grinding stuff in games these days, and that didn't exist like you know ten years ago. That that was just not real. You know, like the odd game would have it, but most games uh, didn't. So yeah. Not to say it's better or worse, it is kind of fun to like grind away to get achievements, but I, of course sometimes it's also fun to just buy a game and be able to play the game and have all the things you want already unlocked, because, I mean, that's fun too, so I don't know. It's it's really apples and oranges as opposed to one's better than the other. Um, man, we're, we're flying through this early level now. Oh, come on, you jerk. Get this guy. Yes! Yeah! We're learning. We, we have the capacity to learn like a computer. So what was your favorite, oh, damn it, arcade game from the golden age of video games? Or better, yeah, what was your, what's your favorite like uh, really, really old arcade game like reference or nod? Like this game has appeared in war games and it also appeared in Avengers and there was a nod to it in Lost. Have there been any other like cool references to old school video games in in, in old or recent movies. 
Um, I, I, I like to see them in. Re I like to see references to these games in recent movies, but there's something even more nostalgic about like watching war games and seeing them play this. Um, by the way, I had never seen war games and I watched it for the first time uh, a few months back. And I gotta say, like, no offense to people who, who really love it, but, like, I did not see what the fuck was about. When you're watching that movie for the first time, there's a lot of stuff in that movie that sort of seems pretty ridiculous and or doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, ugh, man, it's hard to get all of these guys. You really have to, like, plan. Oh, no. No. And you can only shoot two balls at a time. You have to, like, plan where you're going to be when they're, like, swarming down on you and, like, try and, like, line them all up perfectly. I bet if you can clear that whole bonus stage killing everything, you get some kind of crazy bonus. Which I would I would love to get sometime, but... I mean... One, first things first, we just got to, like, survive past level four, whatever we've made it to so far. Oh man, they're getting they're getting really fast. I hate to see I, I hate to think how fast they're gonna get on like the hard levels. I feel like we're still like in the easy levels. Oh we got just got a one up! Has that ever happened before? Have we ever got a one up? Oh I guess we we ha we we definitely had to have gotten a one up because we got the thirty thousand points. But whatever, I'm still taking it as an achievement. I noticed this time! I noticed that we got a one up. That's that this is the first time that I noticed that. So that's an achievement. Oh, I'm getting ballsier with killing these guys. Oh, and you're done. Oh, there we go. We sniped him. We still got it in me. That was like a headshot. That was like getting a headshot in a modern shooter. Oh, God, that guy just homed right in on me. How was that fair? Man, you really got to They get pretty aggressive. I guess they figure out that flying listfully generally towards you is not a good strategy. Man. Okay, well... Okay, this game gets hard. Oh, jeez. You really gotta, you really gotta watch those guys when they're like coming at you at the beginning of the level. They will kill you. 800 points. Ah. Yes. All right, we passed the level. We're almost at my maximum score, which is uh, 30,000. I wonder what the the like little medals in the corner mean. Like the five, see in the bottom left corner, there's like a five and like another metal. I wonder what that means. Oh, get away from me. Ah! <laughs> it seems like you can hide in the left or right side of the screen and you're really generally pretty safe. Like, ah, damn it, they're not going to get you in the far right or far left. I peeked out. Hey, we, we beat our high score. I peeked out to try and shoot a guy and we, we got hurt. 47%. I don't seem to be able to crack the 50% mark here. Do we get a high score? Yes, we do. Because it's the highest score, I will go ahead and enter my name again. I only take the glory when it's the best glory there is. Like, the reason I didn't enter my name when I was uh, second there and I'm dot ah uh, ah uh, is because I was like, to hell with it. If I can't be number one, I'd rather be nothing. But if I can't be number one, then I definitely want to be number one. That's the way that goes. Okay, we're going to insert one more coin here. And we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. Now, like all games from the Golden Era, this is game is set in space. And here's another little bit of trivia for you. You know why that's the case? Do you know why they set so many games in, like, the Atari and early arcade era in space? It's because when you have a black background, you don't have to draw anything. So computers were not super powerful back in the 80s. And in order to draw sprites on the screen, you had to tell a computer to draw certain colors in certain locations. And that is computationally expensive. So if you want to be easy on the computer, you leave large swaths of basically black on your screen where you're not drawing anything. And as a result, you have these games that tend to have black backgrounds. And what has a black background? Well, space. So you might as well set all your games in space if you don't have very powerful computers. And that's basically why like everything was set in space in the 80s. It was space this and space that. I mean, even look to games like uh, Venture on the ColecoVision that weren't set in space. It still has a black background. So yeah, the the whole the whole space theme of everything. I mean, it was it was also part of the fascination of like Star Wars and stuff at the time. So Star Wars definitely also played a role in that too. Uh, but it 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 was sort of a confluence of things that combined with the fact that it was easier just to have black backgrounds. They were like, ah, shit, just put it all in space. Just put everything in space. It all takes place in space. That's our our go-to line. If anybody asks, we're in space. Yeah. Get away from me. 
You're not sucking me up. Yeah, I gotcha. Ugh. Okay, one more shot, one more shot, one more shot, one more shot. Oh, he's bobbing and he's weaving. Oh, and he got me. Oh, damn it. Oh, that, that hurts so bad, guys. You have no idea. Oh, and I missed those guys, too. Oh, get them all. Kill them all, kill them all. Oh, I missed everything. Oh, my God. I just want to kill, like, one line of these guys. Oh, there's two guys. Oh, there's one guy. There's always a survivor, damn it. I, I don't want anyone to... Yes, I got them all. So you get a thousand points when you get them all. Huh. 33 hits. Bonus, 3,300. I like those numbers. <laughs> Another interesting bit of trivia for this game is obviously, like most uh, most other games of the Golden Era, it has no no official end, but it does have a kill screen on level, like, 255, I think. Uh, many games had that. I think, like, Pac-Man had that and Donkey Kong did. Basically, they designed this game to just basically run forever, so it officially has no end. But once you get up to a level that's too high, uh, the system runs out of memory and you get like an overflow error and you basically hit a screen that you basically can't pass or the game crashes. They call it a kill screen. Uh, it's pretty common in these old games. It's kind of like they just never planned for s that somebody would ever actually make it uh, that far in the game. But I guess they, they underestimated the intensity of gamers. Nobody would dare make that mistake these days. Imagine they released a video game that like didn't have an official end. Uh, but if you got far enough into the game, the game would crash. They would, I mean, they would have to patch that. Nobody would stand for that. They would, they would demand patches. They'd be like, what the hell, man? Like, at least, at least allow it to run infinitely. If not, give us, give us like an end boss or something. These games also never really had bosses, as you can tell. So, uh, you know, especially in this game, it's just the same level over and over again with the odd bonus stage. Um, so there are definitely no bosses or anything to, to, to fight. But uh, this is just how video games were, man. You did it for the skill of it. it. It was very, you know, you weren't, you didn't play a game to like go on a grand adventure and explore new worlds and stuff. You played it to basically get really, really good at doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and like in a way, like all video games are like that. Like video games are based on repetition. Like the whole concept of gaming is I'm going to do the same thing over and over again and try and get really good at it. Ah, we suck this time around. Maybe we'll do one more quarter. Um, but modern games, they dress it up a little bit so it feels like you're doing something different. You know, like the levels will look a little different. Um, the enemies will look a little different. Like things will all look a little different to make you feel like um, you're not doing the same thing over and over again. But really, all games are doing the same thing over and over again. That's why Bungie, the developers of Halo, said, you know, like, in order to have a good game, you have to have a good, it's like a 30-second cycle or whatever. Like, basically, you have to have 30 seconds of gameplay that feels super, super satisfying, and then you just have to figure out how to repeat that over and over and over again. Whether it's in a campaign story or in multiplayer with different enemies or whatever, you have that 30 seconds of gameplay that you develop really, really sharply, and then you just figure out ways to repeat it. And that's how you make a good game. And, like, it was true back in the 80s, and it's still true now. They've just figured out more ways to dress it up these days. Oh, we blew through that level. Oh, my God. Am I actually getting good at a video game? That that would be crazy. It's, what, a, what a crazy thought. A guy who plays video games day in and day out for YouTube is actually getting good at a game. Call the press. <laughs> Call the media, the news media. This just in. Gaming J is getting good at games. Well, wonders never cease. Um, you're not beaming me up, buddy. Oh, man. I, I I better not get cocky here. That's how I die. Oh! Take it easy. Oh, God. These, these guys bob and weave like crazy. Oh, he, he totally dodged that. Yeah, but I got him. He ate my space laser. Yeah! Ah, there's always one survivor, man. Every time. Ah, oh, there's two survivors that time. Ah, oh, there's like a billion survivors. Everyone survived that time. Ah, uh, we let them go to tell the tale. Oh, I'm getting worse. I'm getting worse at this bonus stage the more it goes on. Yes, we got them all. Oh, we got two rows of guys. That's actually pretty unique. I haven't done that before, but we've got fewer hits. That's okay. So what is a Galaga? What is a Galaga? It's a sequel to Galaxian, but what's a Galaxian? This is, that just raises more questions. Knowing what a Galaga is just raises more questions. 
The Galaga. What could it be? Is it the name of the ship, maybe? Or maybe it's the alien race that's attacking us? The Galagas. Uh, I don't think it's that. Maybe it's like the galactic organization. The Galaga. I don't even know what Galaga sounds like. It just, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a video game. Galaga is a video game. That's what it is. That's all you need to know. Galaga. So just like an ambiguous 80s space name. That's what it is. Whoa! Where are these space scorpions coming from? They just appear randomly. I don't see them up there with the other alien ships. Yes! Oh man, we're, we're flying through this. Stage 5. Oh! Are the little... Oh, you son of a... Are the little metals in the bottom right corner of the level that I'm on? So I'm on stage 5? That would, that would make sense. Oh, get away! Damn it. So if you don't kill enough of those guys when they come spinning down at you, they will attack you aggressively. Okay, so I'm, I'm figuring out the mechanics of this game. Oh my god. It's a lot more fast-paced than Space Invaders. Space Invaders started out nice and slowly. Look, those, those scorpions morphed out of one of the other guys. They hatched. But Space Invaders starts out nice and slowly, relaxed, can take your time, kill the aliens at your leisure. This one is like, from from the get-go, you're under assault. The senses, your ship, your sense of being a man, everything's under assault. They just want you dead. Oh, get away. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. No, oh, they're gonna fly at me! <laughs> if you don't kill enough of those... Those fucking things, they fly at you. Oh, God! Uh, things are getting intense, man. Man, I, I could tell why this game was, was such a hit. Like, it's, again, it seems simple, but there's, it, it's so fast paced, it's crazy. Like, my arm, my arm's legit getting tired. Oh, there's so much going on on the screen, it's crazy. Go away! Go away! I wonder if it ever gets to the point where, like, everything on the screen is flying at you and you have to dodge, like, a billion things all at once. Woo! Did it. Level 7. Is this the farthest I've ever gotten? Oh, it's the second bonus stage. Oh, what the? I thought they were going to kill me from the side. Ah, man. Yeah! Okay, here they come. Boom! That's a perfect one. Yeah! This is fun. I like the bonus stage because they don't shoot at you. <laughs> They're just like, we're going to fly around you intimidatingly and... Hopefully you don't kill us. 34 hits. That's 3,400 bonus. We are almost... I don't know if we're going to make it to another extra life. Things are only going to get... Oh, crap. Look how fast they go. This is this is going to be really hard. And they fly at you. I'm just going to stay in the corner. Try and survive. Oh, we're on our last life, people. How far can Gaming J get? Do you believe in me? Oh, it's stupid if you do, though. Oh, I can't believe I survived that. Oh, here it is, people. Is this what you turned into C? Is this what you wanted? Oh, man. Thumbs hurting. Ah, oh, we died. Ah, oh, we didn't make it. We didn't make it. 40, I'm getting slightly worse in my hit percentages. Never cracked the 50. Well, this has been Galaga. And damn right we got the high score. Damn right. Go ahead and enter my name. Taking my time here. I'm in no one. I'm in no rush. I am. I've earned the ability to take it slow. The kick butt at Galaxian or Galaga. Galaxian's the prequel to this, or rather, this is the sequel to Galaxian. The prequel implies that this was made first, and they were like, you know what? We need backstory here. What is a Galaga? Let's go in and make a prequel game. Whereas, really what happens, they make Galaxy, and they were like, hey, this did well, let's go ahead and make another game. Make more money. More money. Anyway, Galaxy in here. This is one of the games of the book, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And, uh, I, I don't think they're wrong. I think that uh, Galaga here, it holds up. Um, as I as I sort of said as I was playing it, it it's kind of like some of these shooters, some of these old old games. They have a bit of a timeless quality to them, where they have that 30 seconds of gameplay that is still fun. And yes, modern games would take that 30 seconds and they would develop a lot more game mechanics around it to make it more complicated and more interesting over time. So you're not playing the same level over and over again. But that doesn't take away from the fact that if you've never tried this before, if you hop in and play it. 
you know, for like half an hour, you'll have a bit of fun with it. So this isn't the type of game that you're going to play like hours and hours and really get into Galaxian and buy the t-shirts and watch the miniseries and, you know, go to the conventions and stuff. But this is the kind of game that like, honestly, you could play and have some fun with. Like uh, if you're just looking for a, a game to kill a bit of time, it has some fun gameplay elements to it. So Galaxian here, I, I definitely agree that it is a game that if you never played it, you should give it a shot. Um, even just for a brief period. Um, but that, that's my thoughts on What do you guys think? In terms of Galac... Or, again, I keep calling it Galaxian. It's Galaga, guys. Galaga. But in terms of Galaga here, what do you guys think? Do you have fond memories of playing this one in the arcade? Is this one that you haven't played before? Let me know in the comments down below. Always interested to hear from you guys. And in the meantime, guys, if you find yourselves fighting space bugs, just remember the bees and the butterflies are the things that you really got to watch out for. And otherwise, take care of yourselves, and peace. Man, I cannot hit this thing. Freaking butterflies?